story now in those mass shootings at two mosques in New Zealand. Let's bring in Susan Devoy. She was previously New Zealand's race commissioner and joins us live now from Melbourne in Australia. Uh, Susan Devoy, these attacks against Muslims in New Zealand have shocked the country, but some people point out that, look, the warning signs for this atrocity were everywhere. Why do you think these signs weren't picked up? Look, I think from my uh, former role as Race Relations Commissioner, I work very closely with the Muslim community. And, um, you know, we have seen an exponential rise, not just in New Zealand, but around the world of, um, of hate crimes. And uh, in particular, I think we brought to the attention of government in New Zealand that um, Muslims were concerned about the increase of threats and abuse directed at them. And, you know, they wanted to be heard and they wanted measures to be in place to, drop, to, to help you know, build more resilient, safer communities. Um, but unfortunately, it hasn't happened, and here we are, you know, today dealing with the aftermath of a, a tragedy that has devastated um, all New Zealanders. Um, and my heart goes out to all those who have lost loved ones, and particularly my Muslim brothers and sisters in my country. Um, and I understand you have many friends uh, still in the Muslim community in New Zealand. Uh, what sort of racist hate do they face on a daily basis, and why do they face this kind of abuse? Most New Zealanders would probably um, think, well, we are one of the most peaceful countries on earth, and that, that this doesn't happen in New Zealand. Uh, in my term as Race Relations Commissioner, as a white New Zealander, I tried really hard to get New Zealanders to understand that actually this happens in our country, you know, that our most marginalised and vulnerable groups face abuse and discrimination every day. You know, and I think... You know, I, I haven't met a Muslim woman in New Zealand who hasn't suffered some form of abuse and discrimination, you know, and we might think that that's... Uh, uh, and, and the signs were there that it was building. You know, in recent years, these things have um, increased and, and enough for people in the government to actually take them seriously. And I think that's what's happened, is people weren't actually taking these threats seriously. You know, it also happens to our Jewish community as well. People are seeing the rise of white um, supremacy you know, even in New Zealand. Um, when, when you were appointed race commissioner, you had what's been described as a rocky start. Uh, you were heavily criticised as being too slow in driving <laughs> race reforms. Some people would say, look, you had the chance to change much of this, but you didn't. Was that criticism fair, do you think? Well, it's, you know, people can have their opinions. I mean, that's really up to them, isn't it? I did the best job I possibly could. Now we're in a situation where we really need a call to action. I'm not in that role anymore, and I'm not the only person, or wasn't the only person, responsible for race relations in New Zealand. This is now up to our government, and I think we've seen exemplary leadership from our Prime Minister, and she will continue to do so. But this is a call to action. It's not what, what has happened, although there will be a lot of reflection and um, there will be a lot of uh, discussion on the uh, by the authorities, but it's really a call to action now. So. We need to ask our government. Firstly, you know, she's already said that she will ban semi-automatic weapons. But uh, we also need to look at our counter-terrorism strategy. Yeah, you, you've, um, you've touched on the issue... On? Yeah, you've touched on the issue of security uh, there, Susan, because I wanted to ask you about the New Zealand police. I mean, do they, do they even record hate crimes, like when mosques or synagogues are defiled? And if they don't, why isn't this taken more seriously? Well, we tried that. I tried, um, you know, I exhausted myself on trying to get New Zealand police to record hate crimes. You know, uh, we live in a country that if you defile a mosque or a synagogue, that's just put down as an act of vandalism, you know. So how do we know the extent of the problem in our country when we don't even record it? That's what we're saying, you know. And hate crimes are directed at many, many different groups, you know. And I think we need to understand the extent of the problem and what we're going to do with it. That's a really good start. But then those that uphold the freedoms of speech and, um, you know, fail to see a duty of care, then, you know, turn it on its head and the whole world becomes sort of, I don't know, riled up that we're attacking their liberties and their freedoms, you know. I think that this is a wake-up call for our country, you know, it's a wake-up call. You know, if you work in an environment like I did, you understand the threats that there, you understand that this is a real reality. And I, I know now that New Zealanders will take that seriously too. Um, as you say, uh, this is a wake-up call uh, for everyone in New Zealand. I mean, but how do you think the country needs to challenge hate and racism going forward? Because if hatred is being normalised in New Zealand, there's a big problem there. 
Hatred's been normalised everywhere in the world, and what we're seeing now is a rise in people feeling validated to do so, you know, for what's happening all around the world. And that has now crept, not crept into our country, it's been made very, very, very visible. So this requires real, real, real leadership from the very top. You know, I have been instrumental in bringing the voice of our Muslim community to the leaders of our country, to those and senior officials. And sadly today, what we've seen is that those voices have been ignored. So all they've asked for is for help. They've asked for resources, both human and financial, to actually build stronger, safer communities. And that's one of the pillars of countering violent extremism, is at the grassroots. These communities know the issues that face them, that they also have the solutions. It's not for us to tell them what to do, it's for us to actually give them the support to be able to do it. It wouldn't, or possibly wouldn't have prevented what has happened today, but that's part and parcel of what we need to do going forward. It's really important that we continue to do what we did yesterday and the day before that, and the day before that, is to call out hate when and where we see it, to be brave, to actually okay. understand now that this happens. Even peaceful on New Zealand. Racism has happened for years. Ask any Māori New Zealander. Susan Devoy, uh, thank you very much indeed for sharing your thoughts with us here at Al Jazeera.